Hey, welcome to Rent Machining. I've got a really cool one for you today. We're gonna to take you on a shop tour. We're gonna to show you the good, the bad, and even the ugly in the shop. But that's okay, because over the next year, the plan is, is to build this shop up and really streamline it to make it a lot easier for me to operate in the shop. And hopefully along the way, you can learn from my mistakes as well. Now, like most people, they don't show you the ugly side of the shop because they're worried about being judged. But what I've realized is by showing people the ugly, I can get a lot more input and get a lot better ideas. And I'm definitely open to your guys' opinions. So without further ado, let's take a tour of the shop and I'll show you what's working, what's not, and what we're gonna build on. Now let's start with my favorite corner, the mill machine corner. Now, now the milling machine is the first milling machine and it's basically run off of this rotary phase converter that I have over here on the wall. And as simple as just a push button, start and stop to start the phase converter. And then once we have it, we come over here and we just turn the machine on. It's, it's relatively pretty simple. I've got up in the left-hand corner my digital readout, and I've got it pretty much at eye level for myself. This has worked out quite well to keep it a little bit out of the way and to keep it out of any problem areas. Up behind the mill machine, because I've only got a 20 by 20 shop, this is where I keep all my wrenches. The mill machine has a relatively good table on it, and currently I have one of those Amazon cheap vices that are on here. I think I paid 200 Canadian for this and I'm not overly too happy with it because there's a lot of spring up in here. But over here, I do have a better quality vise that I do use on occasion. I've got my indexing head, I've got my rotary table and I've got a better quality vise. Now I know they're a little bit dusty. We're gonna fix that up over the next year like we talked. But on this table here, I've got actually rolling wheels on it. So conveniently we can just roll that over here and we can swap this stuff back and forth without busting our back. Away from the milling machine stuff now for a second and take a look at the closing Matosa lathe. Now, this is kind of the workhorse lathe of the shop. It's my only lathe, of course. This lathe has served me quite well. It's got quite a bit of horsepower for everything I need and I've never had any problems with it. Of course, I've done a lot of the routine maintenance that's needed from it, like oil changes. And I think I've had the odd little tiny problem with it. Now, the digital readout that's on it is a digital readout that I put on myself. I think it was from the DRO store or two, two auto. It was one of your $300, it was one of your $300 DROs. The, <laughs> but the only problem is when I ordered it, it's a super, super high precision one. So there's way too many zeros after the point. So I had to put a piece of black electrical tape over it just, just so I don't get confused. Now, I'm pretty sure some of you guys have already noticed that it's sitting up on a skid still. Now this is the skid that I originally got it with. This is kind of causing me a little bit of precision issues because the lathe isn't quite bedded proper. And we're actually gonna, that's one of the projects that we're gonna do this year is we're actually gonna lift that off of there. We're gonna balance this lathe out and get her all set up proper. In the head of the lathe, because I'm really short on space, I had to put a toolbox. Now, I don't have any of my precision instruments in it because it does get a little bit warm and that might throw me off a bit. Let's take a quick look above the lathe. I'm sure you guys noticed that I got a phase converter. Now let's explain to you what these boxes are for. I've got an American rotary phase converter. It's a 15 horse phase converter, which means I'm good for up to seven horsepower motors. I've got a 220 line running in. I believe it's a 50 amp line. I'll have to check that. Running into here. And then I plug the whole setup in to my phase converter. Now the reason why I've gone for this is because I'm a small shop and I might expand at some point, I want this portable. I don't want to wire it straight into my shop. Once I plug this in here, the power goes up to the phase converter and it's always running into the splitter here. You'll see the two lights on over here that are orange. I can turn the third phase on when I turn this on. Now that motor's generating the third phase and I've got a green indicating light over here showing me that I got the third phase and it's operating correctly. Let's turn this off and then we'll explain the rest of it. From there, going down to these two transformers. I've got a 600 volt transformer and I've got a 440 volt transformer. Now, I know I got a bunch of junk on them right now, and this is another thing that we're gonna clean up over the next year and tidy up as it goes. These two transformers are on a wheel-based setup in front of the bay door. Now, the reason why they're on a wheel-based setup is not only is it portable for later, I can roll this out of the way when I wanna bring machines into the shop, and it's not gonna be a problem and in the way. From those transformers, it's gonna come back up here to my disconnects. I've got one for 440 volt, I've got one for 600 volt. So I'll turn the phase converter on. When I'm ready to use power, I throw this up. These disconnects are super important for the setup that I have 
because if you don't have these disconnects, you'll have two phases of power running into your machine and not the third leg, which can burn out motors. On the other rotary phase converter that I have over there, for some reason it's wired a little bit differently and it's either on or off completely. Now, let's unplug this and we'll move on to some of the other stuff I got in the shop. Over here, I have the tool. Remember in one of the other videos where I put the treadmill motor on here? You should check that out if you haven't seen that one before. It's been working pretty good for me in the shop here. So you guys have already seen that before. So let's take a look over this here. This Ribbon RUR800 is a really good machine and I'm really excited about using it in the next year. I've got it jacked up a little bit more because of my height and I've still got to level it out and I've got to add a few things to it. I've already added an emergency stop to it, but later on this year, we're gonna throw on this digital readout on this machine because I'm a big fan of digital readout. It just takes a lot of the thinking out of your operation. Let's move over to the right hand side here. You guys have seen me use this surface grinder here before. It's worked quite well. And later on this year, we're actually gonna level this machine out here as well. We're gonna level a lot of these machines out. Remember we said there was the good, bad and the ugly. Speaking of the ugly, let's take a look at the ugly over here. Oh my God. You guys have probably a corner in your shop that looks like this too. So don't, don't judge me. But anyways, over the next year, we're gonna figure out what to do with all of this crap and make it a little bit more functional and get, get a workbench back. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one out there. I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard Everett's workshop allude to this as well. Um, Everett, like myself, he dedicated a lot of time to hanging out with his kids, which is more important than cleaning the shop. And I'm at the stage now where my boys just went back to school, a little bit different phase than he is. And it's, it's time to get this, time to get this right. You know what I mean? Now let's take a walk over to the side shop. Oh yes. And here, um, unprepared for you is the CNC table. You've seen this in a lot of my other videos. Um, I had to move everything around so that you guys could see the best of the videos. Um, but you've seen this in other videos in action and it's kind of the workhorse, the plasma cutter, the router, you name it. Um, I built this a few years back and it's, it's been really, really good. And if you guys got any questions on that, throw them in the comments below and I'll answer what I can for you. Let's take a walk out to the side shop over there. Hey, while we're walking around out to the side shop, let's take a look at the service truck that I've got. I was using this quite a bit when I was in the shutdown circuit. The train setup that I've got built there works quite well and I've lifted up to a thousand pounds on it and it's tied into the frame down below and it's just got your standard quad winch on it, whatever, for 1500 pounds. And then I've got it on a two to one. It works phenomenally. Then up top here, I've got an air compressor and it's an old air compressor that I had sitting behind the shop that had a tank popped in it. Cut the tank off, welded it onto the top and then way up over there where you can't see now on the other side, there's actually a semi tank that I think I picked up from break something or other and they they sold to me for 100 bucks and it's all certified good to go tacked it on there plumbed it up and it's just phenomenal on it i've got a flat deck the only thing i would fix on this flat deck is i should should have put stake sides on it so i can actually put stuff in it and drive away and it's not going to fall off but let's carry on we'll walk into the side shop here and we'll have a look through here now this is this is where i have a very patient wife the man treasure in the front yard um, and you guys, I'm halfway through building this here, but I've actually started using it. Um, <laughs> this is a uh, oil furnace heater. Um, maybe there'll be an episode on something later on it, but this is, I'm actually using this to cart stuff around right now. All right, we're in the side shop now. This is the diamond in the rough, so to speak. Let's take a quick look at it here. I'll pivot you over here. So first thing that jumps to mind here, yes, I have a radial arm drill. I'm pretty stoked, about, pretty stoked about that machine. However, it's still sitting on the blocks. When I got it, I haven't turned it on yet. Um, there's no phase converter out this side of the shop and we're gonna hook that up. That'll be a video later on as well, as well as hooking that up as well and bolting it to the ground. Um, this pad underneath here was poured in mind for having these heavy machines out here. So that's not a problem. A little bit later on, we're also gonna do another video on up this side of the shop here. Let me walk over here. We're gonna have a steel rack, hopefully, right in here. You've seen all my steel and all my other videos. There's like a corner here, a corner there. There's a little plate over there. And, and frankly, I just need a place that I'm just gonna cut the stock, take it out to the shop, 
and do what I do with it. And to cut it, I've got this machine right here. It's an old recip saw, uh, phenomenal machine, super accurate for cutting straight, kind of slow, but I'm not a production shop. I don't need to keep up. I don't need to keep up with anybody. I just need to keep up with myself. That's the key, right? And then coming over here, oh, this is, this is my favorite right here. This is a Van Norman milling machine. I'm really sorry, it's covered in stuff. Um, it's covered in all of the, the, the welder. I know, I know I shouldn't be welding out here, but I'm not moving it. I'm gonna clean the ways really good before I start using it. And most of my welding's starting to happen outside, out in the driveway, in the glazing sun or the blistering cold. But anyways, um, we're slowly organizing this. And at, at some point I wanna have a video on getting this up and running. I had thoughts of setting it up as a CNC machine, but I don't really want to wreck the heritage of it because it's such a beautiful machine. I mean, um, the vintage machinery website or the vintage, the vintage machinery guys would just absolutely kill me if I wrecked this thing. So I'm probably going to bring it back to roughly what it used to be. I might add some brackets on it for CNC and then take out a bit of the backlash. I don't have any three phase power out here. And this is the beginnings of me building the three-phase converter. This, there's also going to be a video on this as well. Not a how-to video. It's going to be how I do it because I don't want to show you how to do something and then, you know, have problems. But I've also got a motor floating around here somewhere as well. I'm not sure where it ran off to. But it's, I think, a seven-horse motor for running this three-horse motor on the Oya over here. And But we'll get into that later. That's like later this year when I get a bit more time. This is going to be a great year for videos, by the way. And then uh, what else do we got here? You've seen this machine here where I built the hand wheel on the other side there. Um, worked quite well. Actually, there's another video on how I put the hydraulic press on here. Probably not one of my better videos, but a good video nonetheless. There's a bunch of squishing stuff in there. Yeah, and then what else do we have over here? Oh, yeah, we've got <laughs> this stuff here. Um, this, th this was a really good deal. I picked up, picked up this stuff for 200 bucks, but it came with like... 20 bandsaw blades um you know if you know anything what the bandsaw blades are worth i've got a bandsaw out there i've got one in my wood shop you're not going to get to see my wood shop today maybe in another video on the shop tour but later on what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of pvc plastic molding and stuff like that that's going to be a great video it's actually coming out by the end of this month and then this thing here i think i'm just going to fix this up get it running and sell it for what i bought it for essentially and, and keep the bandsaw blades um, but it'll be in better condition than when I got it. But uh, yeah, I hope you like the tour today. Um, if you haven't seen my channel before, now's the time to click on the subscribe button. Subscribe button? Yes, the subscribe button. And uh, check out all the stuff that I've been talking about. There's a lot of good stuff coming this year. And we'll catch you on the next one.